You're watching The Scott Templeton Show. Judo in general, basically it was the first martial art that is, was an Olympic sport. Uh, first time I was an Olympian is 1980, which was Moscow, which was boycotted. So oh, that was a yeah. tough start. But then I went on to make three other teams, and I, I uh, the 84, 88, and 92, and um, I bronzed in, I took a bronze medal in 1988, and I was able to become the first American to win the world championships, the first American male to win the world championships in 1987, which was kind of the highlight for, for U.S. judo because uh, we had been trying ever since 1956 when the world started. Judo players and, and athletes in general that are phenomenal at their particular sport that haven't made one Olympic series, and then for you to go on for that many consecutive, what, what, had, what motivated you to compete at that level? Well, I mean, you know, when I was 16, I, I, I was in San Francisco, California, right. and I was able to, I became the youngest uh, member to, to the world team. I, I just walked in, I didn't, I didn't know what I was, where really, what I was up to, I mean, it was the world trials, and I ended up winning it. Wow. Uh, um, and just from that point on, it just motivated me, because I knew that I had a good chance to compete at the world level. So Now, were you naturally gifted as an athlete, or you, you worked harder than everybody else for a combo yeah, of both? Not, not necessarily. I mean, I think a lot of martial arts uh, guys in general uh, are the guys who, you know, can't make the football team, the <laughs> baseball team. <laughs> you know, and, I mean, you know, we have so many pro sports here. We have so right. many big guys, and they're so fast and agile that, uh, right. you know, it's tough. To, and, 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 but martial arts is, uh, it's for everybody at all ages. And right. I just, I got into it at eight years old and it was something that I liked and enjoyed and I stuck with it. Well, the Japanese, it's a whole nother level, you know, instead right. of having 20 guys on the mat, you have 200 guys. So when I was, uh, you know, 19, I, I sold my Chevy Nova <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I right. got about, you know, I don't know, 700 bucks maybe. And I, and I moved to Japan for a couple of years, because I knew that if I wanted to win the Olympics or win the world championships, I've got to go where the best players are. So that's what happened. I, I, yeah. I just went to Japan and got off the plane and realized I didn't know how to speak any Japanese. Wow. I didn't know anybody. <laughs> but uh, that, Where did your that, parents think you were? Uh, they, that's they, with the they, host family? You know, I told them I had somebody who was going to pick me up, but that was kind wow. of a lie. <laughs> kind of a lie. And where did you live? I lived in the dormitory. And all I did At was Dakota judo. Con? Yeah, every wow. you know, it's six in the morning. Yeah. And then well, I practiced three three times. Once in the morning with the with the uh, school, and then in the afternoon with the police academy, mm -hmm. and then at night with the uh, with the university, Nihon University. Wow. Then how did you segue from uh, athlete to coach? You were head coach of what, the '96 Olympics, right? Yeah, '96 Olympics. You know, I retired after Barcelona, mm -hmm. and uh, I I decided to you know, co well, I was able to coach in '96 because of all my knowledge and my experience. They, I was kind of young right. for a coach, but they, they, you know, they hired me. And uh, they, we, we took a bronze medal in 96, and, and uh, that was in Atlanta, so it was a great experience. So my whole life has basically been around judo. Right. Uh, and, yeah. So that being said, you know, you, in 96 or 98, whatever it was, when you felt like your competitive judo career was over and you really had to go into what's called the real world, what did you do from there? I started, um, well, I was working for a computer company called mm -hmm. Chips and Technologies, and then I started my own company, Swain, Swain Mats. Right. And uh, I was really on the breaking level of introducing a flooring system to martial arts. My first event was a karate tournament. I went to, and they were competing on concrete. Wow. And uh, you know, cool. I walked up to the promoter, and I said, you guys need some mats, you know, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> these kids are doing cartwheels and right. flips. And, you know, he looked at me, and, and he said, why? We haven't used mats in 10 years. Why, why would I need a mat? You know? wow. So it was a tough road at the beginning. But then the, that was right about the time that MMA started. You know, the, the Gracie right. brothers had just come over in the, you know, in the 90s and, uh, or late 80s, maybe early 90s. Right. And um, the, the MMA, whole martial arts MMA thing just started to take off. So the timing was perfect. Right. So I ended up, right. actually, I ended up. Uh, just recently, last year, selling my company, Swain Mats, which, which was the biggest, you know, mat company in martial arts in the United States, sold it to Dalamar, mm -hmm. uh, Dalamar LP, and now I've joined the Dalamar team, and uh, uh, they, they also supply mats to wrestling, gymnastics, cheerleading, and now martial arts, so they're, they're by far the biggest 
Mac company in the United States and probably will be in the world. Sure. So you, you know, pretty much been a globe trotter your whole life. Now, do you still how active in traveling are you now? Uh, I'd like to say I'm not, but I'm used yeah. to have gone all the time. Yeah. 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 We're, we're trying to break into the you know, European market, and we're doing a really good job of it. We've got a couple big events over there that are going to use our Flexi Roll product. Right. And uh, the Flexi Roll is an innovative new mat system. Uh, for martial arts, because mm -hmm. it's lightweight, it rolls out. There's no seams, uh, and it's also used, you know, for, for wrestling. And, it, and, and it's just a great product. And it's uh, so I, I see growth all over the place right now. Yeah. Now, how, how does it differ from using the gi and then using either no gi or crash guard? Yeah, I mean the the basic techniques of judo. You know, there, there's four techniques. There's mm -hmm. you can throw the person, mm -hmm. you can choke them, uh, you can arm lock them, or right. you can pin them. And a lot of people don't realize that three of the four techniques are on the ground. Right. So, you know, right, right about when I uh, stopped competing, uh, you know, the martial, the ultimate fighting started, you know, and, right. and they wanted, they, they call, I got the call, you know, ah. we want you to come over. And, but I was shot. I was done. I was right. through competing. I was retired. And uh, They did want you to compete? <laughs> yeah, this is a couple of years after, you know, after I had stopped going Go ahead and head with Crazy, huh? Yeah, it was. That would have been exactly. one of the archives. Well, you know, it would have been it would have been fun, but yeah. but I was done. I was retired. So right now, I've, I've I work with a lot of uh, right. MMA guys, and um, basically, it's just one part of their whole package, though. Right. But what I see now is, you know, the, it, first it was on the ground, then it mm -hmm. was all the striking, and now it's kind of come full circle where they they want the, the the techniques to get the person to the ground when they're in a clinch. Right. And um, that's why I work with more and more guys that are. Right, heading toward MMA. Now. Right, and that being said, you 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 are in, still in high demand. You know, for example, the guys that are in MMA and Jiu Jitsu specific, they're looking after you to add some judo to part of their game. Um, twofold. That how important is it to add judo to your game after you've been in one art for long? And then with the youth, how important is it for the kids to stay in a particular art before they start doing MMA? Well, the first question is, you know, for an MMA fighter, they they need takedowns, they need foot sweeps. Right. A lot of you know. Throws are the hardest thing to learn. You know, I can you give me somebody for three months and I'll I'll get them up to here on the ground. They can learn the ground the techniques, you know, the arm locks, the chokes, <clears throat> because it's fairly safe. You know, you, when you start when you have to learn how to throw somebody, that means the other person has to kind of help you as well, right? Right. So if you have a stiff person and you're trying to throw them, you're both going to get hurt. You know, on the ground it's a little bit more. Uh, you know, it's it's a little slower pace. Right. So so to teach throws to adults. Is, is very difficult because nobody wants to take a fall. Right. You know, they're all afraid of, of slapping the mat and falling and getting hurt. Right. Um, kids love it. Right. Uh, so I would say judo is the, the kid's sport sure. of, the, of the next, you know, 10 years, I would say. You know, the kids love to do the throws right. and they also, and it also has the grappling, so. Right. Um, it seems like the guys that have stuck with judo or any particular art, judo, wrestling, karate, Muay Thai, whatever it may be, and then right. segue to MMA after years of, you know, dedicated training are doing pretty successful instead of trying to do 10 arts at once up front. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, if you take a solid uh, uh, competitor that's been training in judo or wrestling or whatever, Muay Thai kickboxing all his life, and he's come up to this level, he's going to be able to pick up the other uh, you know, things that make a well-rounded MMA fighter quicker, I think. Right. And if you take somebody fr from from you know, who knows nothing, and they start learning a little bit about everything. Right. You know, I think it's going to take a little, a little longer. Plus, you're getting a better athlete, a more focused athlete. You know, with somebody who's uh, pursued another martial art or another sport for right. a long time. They have dedication. They know, they know commitment. And in the end, those those are the things that really make a good fighter. You know, they can, you can have different techniques, but if they're not focused, committed, and they have, you know, this drive or passion to win, then and they're not going to win. Well, good. Well, appreciate you taking time out today. And how about you show uh, some of the viewers a few of the moves, judo moves? Sure, no problem.